everyone, it's Chaz, it's the West Ham Minds channel, it's the West Ham Tactics and Stats show, it's a new show. So this will hopefully be a regular feature as and when it's required. Um, so I hope you enjoy, it's going to be kept slightly separate from the transfer window, separate from the daily news show that will resume once a transfer window closes and obviously separate. Um, from the um, instant match review live shows that I will be doing. Um, I might bring it regularly in terms of discussing matches. I'm thinking about it, but at the moment it's in, it's in terms of sort of player tactics in terms of which I'll do in the next couple of days over JLo. really. That'll be formed part of this show. But what we're doing today is um, Wambasaka. Obviously, it's imminent that the official announcement will be made um, on the official club website. The latest news I've heard from one or two sources are that late last night, they were still pending one or two things. And then this morning from one or two people that it's it's been signed. That's the last I've heard. And obviously, yeah, it's just pending official announcement on the official club website. I'm going to assume he's joined and that's why I'm doing this show. So when it is announced, I'll do a separate show. But I wanted to keep this one nice and separate, really, for you. And I hope you enjoy it. It's something I enjoy. It's kind of lo looking at, yeah, team tactics, current tactics, future tactics, possible tactics, um, opposition analysis. I might do that in the future, see how that comes. But at the moment, this current show, the first one, kicking off the series in the new show shall we say he's discussing Wan Basaka his kind of strengths his weaknesses comparing him with other premiership right backs I think that's really interesting um, and then comparing him um, with kind of the full backs we've got at the moment really so I hope you find that interesting before I get into it again keep subscribing keep sharing we are ever so close to 3,000 subs I'm gonna go for it flat out now till till the Villa game see how close we can get really so let's see what I'm going to share with you at the beginning. Let's have a look. Bum, bum, bum. Kufal, Johnson, Kufal. I thought that was the announcement there. There you go. Um, yeah, let's have a look at this, really, before I really, really get into it. So this, again, stats can be overwhelming, especially if you don't like numbers, you don't like maths and things like that. I get that. Um, I'm hoping that I can explain you through the minefield so the first this grid compares Aaron Wambasaka imminent right back arrival gonna be our first choice against our current right back Vladimir Kufal so if you look at Wambasaka which is kind of in the red color I'm color brine so you know the one that looks like red or <laughs> whatever <laughs> so don't tell me about the colors in the comments you naughty people you know what I'm like but yeah so it looks like Wambasaka, when you look at that grid where it ends and points and stretches, it Wambasaka's biggest strength is one one v one defending, which we kind of knew about, which we kind of heard about, and, and that's really, really good. Because as I said, any defender you bring in, I know the modern game is about wing backs, it's about overlapping, it's about crossing, assists, goals, free kicks, throw ins set pieces but for me being perhaps more swayed towards the traditional side as a defender the foremost and first skill I want you to have is pure defensive that means can you tackle can you mark can you intercept can you read the situation can you foresee danger Th those are the four or five key things and that's particularly annoying when I look at a GERD Mab um lacking concentration lacking where you should be marking your player, what side you should be at, anticipating danger. They haven't got none of those skills. But what we concentrate on, which is annoying in the modern game, is look at a Gerd's passing ability. Long, short, how silky he looks on the ball. I get that, but for me, every time we can see the goal, a Gerd more than, well, more likely than not, is the culprit who's let his defenders slip you know hasn't marked them one one kind of moment comes to mind is against Liverpool I think it was away last season and um, 
Nunes, who, who didn't really have a particularly great season, but as you know, these guys always have a great game against West Ham. So any 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 striker out of form needs a goal. Play West Ham, you're going to be all right, mate. So Nunes, I think he was in the first half. He got in between Zuma and the Gerd and scored and made space, and that was embarrassing. And it happened far too often. We had one of the worst defences last season. No one really telling anyone who you're marking. Whether that was zonal marking, David Moyes, I don't know. I do not like zonal marking because then no one knows who's picking up who. And often you find two defenders together marking no one and the strikers in the other zone by himself. Just mark your man, take your man. And I don't and, and I also like when, when people used to have a defender, at least one near the near, near the far post. You can you can make clearances off the line. You remember Lampard's pictures, retro holding, you know, standing on the goal line prior to corner being taken, raced you, all our full backs you cover your corner so you can clear off the line. That that's kind of died down as well. I like traditional defensive things like that, really. So back to the grid. Wambasaka's initial biggest strength for everyone is 1v1 defending. That That's good to see. Second, and another huge um, positive, ball retention. He doesn't lose the ball once he's got it, and he can defend, right? Um, penalty area defending is very good as well. It's all about looking at that grid, and if you look at the the, the corner here, the closer it is to the end of the grid, that, that that that's a fairly fairly good strength, really. So, in terms of something that could be better, progressive carrying isn't good, and progressive passing is isn't good, and that means attacking with the ball. He won't lose it, but he's not going to go forward with it in 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 a in, a, in an attacking way. Again, I assume he's an intelligent player. He's a good pedigree player and he'll learn. And, and J Lo's strengths, I believe, is coaching and getting man management and getting player management and getting the best out of the players. If they're off form, take them out a bit, rotate the squad. And if they've got personal issues, have a word with them. That's that's why I think I've seen J Lo walk around, have a laugh with all the players, have a, a little bit of tongue in cheek with Paqueta, like I said, saying, saying, hey, big boy, mate, I know you're superb, but I know you can do that little bit more for me you know just using these tactics to motivate your players noticing when they're a bit down lift them up noticing when they're a bit out of form and and, and do the best you can in terms of getting them back to form really so yeah progressive carrying progressive passing he has to work on it a little bit really penalty area defending isn't bad like i said anything with defending in it he's your man kafal you can see it's the opposite isn't it so ball recovery is really good uh, progressive passing is really good and progressive carrying is, is touch better as well. Ball retention, one-to-one -one defending is, is, is in Kafal's cup of tea. So you can see again, uh, if you want a good defender, which I know you guys do, we've got the right man here really. And, and Kafal, obviously, again, these players who are not going to get regular games, everyone, they're going to be amazing substitutes for West Ham. Like I keep saying, you're trying to break through in a game, it's nil-nil, or perhaps you need a goal to get back in the game you're losing. You've got Antonio on the bench, you've got Suchek on the bench, you've got Kafal on the bench, and all these guys are going to create problems in the in, in the opposition's defense really so I, I think that's kind of really really interesting I kind of hoped you kind of enjoy that like I said I know it could be overwhelming but if you stick with me you stick with the tactics and stats show you will get very familiar with these type of grids because I will be using them from the same source and you will get familiar with it really so having looked at that, let's kind of look at um, comparing Wambasaka with all the major right backs that the stats software enabled me to to kind of. I think this is fairly simple to understand. Um, look at the top. Um, yeah, market value. Don't worry about that too much. Names, ages, club badges. You understand that. And if we go to Wambasaka at the bottom, once again confirming 90%, that second column, ball retention, is the best out of all of them, isn't it? I think it is. Who's, who's near him? Right, the Wolves one. Nuri, 87%. That boy can defend. Tinchenko, 94%. Wow, I didn't think the guy could defend, but he can. Interesting. Castani is not bad. And then you can see the stats of all the others. Um, what else is good with him? Yeah, 1v1 defending. 97% everyone. Who's near him? Uh, Forrest Aina, is it? 90%? Don't know too much about him. But he's up there as, as the best. The best 1v1 right back in the Premiership. 
and the best ball retention, according to stats, really. What else is kind of all right? Uh, ball recovery, 58%, but we can work on that. Chance creation, yeah, not very good, is it? Assists, like I said. But we'll work on that. We'll work on that and hopefully get better. Progressive passing, like I told you. He's not a goal threat. Just going to check my phone. Is that... Um, sorry, there's something else. Um, but yeah, there again, I hope that's a nice snapshot, nice summary. Um, so we compared him with our very own beloved Kefal, and then we're comparing Wan Basak with all the rest of the fullbacks, right back, sorry. And, and he sits in good company, I think. Who's really good up there? Chinchenko Arsenal. I'm surprised. I mean, he... Is he, I've seen him, but ooh, I don't know, I don't know. But looks like, yeah, Zinchenko can, he, he can do everything. But why is he not in the Arsenal team then? But anyway, yes, yeah, that's all, don't always show the true, true picture. But it's always interesting, I think, to just monitor it. This is what a lot of the clubs um, do use, especially when buying. We all hear about the Brighton computer, the Brentford system. We hear about Sam Allardyce, who was the first one who went to America bought back stats and other things so it's, it's interesting it's part of the modern game whether you like it or not and i think yeah don't take too, too much to heart but it, it's kind of interesting isn't it that's kind of that i've got one more thing to show you it's um kufal and johnson i can't find emerson on this software i can't find emerson on this software so apologies about that ben johnson was in there so again it's a nice little comparison isn't it like we confirmed that kufal is really good at passing uh, really good at ball recovery, reasonably all right, chance creation. What's Ben Johnson good at? 1v1 defending. I'm, I'm surprised by that. I'm really, well, tell me, in the, tell me in the comments. Listen, I'm only human. I'm probably being a bit harsh on him, but it looks like Ben Johnson 1v1 defending is really good. Um, progressive passing. Yeah, the rest of the stats are below average, really. So it'll be interesting to see how he gets on an Ipswich, but 1v1 defending will certainly... He'll need that skill, really. So, on to some more stats. Um, this one might be quite complicated. So, like I said, these are going to be... You're going to get familiar with these layouts as the season progresses. And again, don't don't look at too many numbers together. You'll get confused. I'll try to guide you through all of these. So, what's all this about? Goal and shot creation. So, we're comparing Basaka, Emerson and Kufal. So it just tells you what kind of passes they do, how many they do, and then defensive actions. Let me have a look at that. Challenges. Okay, so I do like to look at percentages because sometimes players have played more games than the other and it doesn't quite give you true story, really. If you look at the tackles, the bottom grid, it kind of tells you how many how many tackles were made and won. Um, so if you have a look at sort of Wan Bissaka, 507 tackles, 329-1. But if we look at the percentages, the challenges, tackles and attempts, I think that will be more better. So have a look at the challenges grid. And percentage-wise, out of the three fullbacks, everyone, Wan Bissaka's got the highest tackle win challenges percentage, 77%. Emerson on 62 Kafal on 57. That's always good to see really so then that again confirming that Basaka overall defensive wise is kind of really really good I'm going to try to get something else out for you and this is again a bit different looking at the shooting really so Kafal again 67% in terms of goal attempts and shots Emerson second Saka, yeah, the, the weaker one out of all of them. Um, passing wise, uh, if you look at a middle block, everyone, let's have a look at the short passing completion. Um, Emerson's the highest, 91.6. Then it's Basaka, 89.9. Then Kafal, 86. So there, that's quite interesting. Medium passes, then Emerson is still the best. Long passes, Emerson is still the best. But it's good to see that Emerson looks like will be the first choice left back. So we've got someone on the other side, slightly better at passing, slightly better at attacking, takes throw-ins, takes the odd corners. But then on the other side, to weigh it up, balance it nicely, you've got a nice out-and-out -out solid defender, really, with that one. And then again, if you look at the bottom one, it's confirming that Basaka doesn't take corner kicks, everyone. But very much Emerson does. That's kind of that one. Got a couple of more to share with you, naughty people. Um, again, similarly to goal creation, isn't it? So let's have a look at this. 
um challenges i think we had a look at this didn't we yeah 77 percent, 62 57 kafal yeah we've had a look at this let me try to get something different up for you guys let's have a look at this one okay yeah this one we haven't seen isn't it so possession wise which is again is going to be very very key with jlo everyone isn't it touches so percentage let's look at percentages um in terms of take on so percentage success so amber sackers at the top uh emerson is second kafal is third and then if we have a look at carries received he's not bad okay that's confusing to me because his percentage of take on taking on someone is kind of okay successful wise but he doesn't seem to take it any further than that but emerson does or does or thereabouts that, that's that's confusing me a little bit the take i thought the take ons that basaka wasn't that good at i thought but it looks like according to this particular bit he is um miscellaneous stats the interesting one in the bottom grid everyone is is in terms of yellow cards at the bottom if you can see and this is a career span i did you can toggle this software doing season to season comparisons just the last two years the last year i just did the career one in this particular case 24 yellows wan basaka one red compare that to emerson 22 one red 38 yellows for kafal four red so looks like um Basaka and Emerson, like we know, they don't pick up too many yellows, which is good to see, isn't it? And if you look at the aerial duels, one, um, Emerson's the strongest, 57.9%. Kafal second, Basaka third, really. And I think I've got one more thing to show you. So this is kind of the passing types. Corners. Corner kick. Oh, I've just heard something. Yeah, corner kicks again. Emerson there. Live dead. I forgot what they meant. You know, a bit naughty. S W C A. Yeah, I'll get that for you next time, or maybe I can have a look for you now. But I just want to. Yeah, pass types. I forgot what the FKTB means, but I'll find out for you really. But I, I think that's enough numbers and stats for the first show. Otherwise, you're gonna get you're gonna get confused. But suffice to say. I think that's everything I wanted to share. I'm double checking. Um, yeah, yeah. I think that was it. I'm just going to leave this one in the corner. And then we'll carry on discussing for a bit. Just leave that one in there nicely for you guys. But yeah, suffice to say that in summary, like we kind of knew and like I was telling you guys, wan is one of the best, if not the best, one-to-one -one pure um defender right back in the premiership right and that's good to see he's someone who's intelligent he can defend he can anticipate he can mark that that's the music to my ears the other side of a modern fullback the defensive side the take-ons the progressive runs he's below average so make make what you want out of that but kufal is everything basaka isn't but look at how many goals we conceded and i don't think even even how much Kufal attacks, I think a lot of the time his crosses don't quite quite hit the bullseye. Assist wise, I'm sure if I did a stat on it, he ain't going to be up there as one of the better ones. I don't think stat wise, isn't it? So although he makes a lot of runs over the halfway line, which I like, but does he really assist a goal? Does he really make a key pass? More often than not, no. No more often than not. But Basaka, on the other hand, will he stop a key attack? Will he stop a goal threat? he will will he block a chance that could be a goal he will so overall um key contribution from wan Saka will be more and it should be he's younger he's worth a lot of more money his pedigree's higher um really so that's kind of interesting to see um when wan Saka is announced i will be doing another small introduction show on him and then i'm hoping to do my next west ham tactics and stats show for tomorrow morning i'll release that one it'll be on uh, on JLo's future tactics. what, How do I think we're going to set up in that first game, first couple of games? 
how can we change tactics um, through the game, through the season, that kind of thing. So I hope you will enjoy that. I'll put my tactics screen on for that. I know you guys enjoyed that already. So we've been going on for 20 minutes. I hope you really like the first show. It will be one that will be running throughout the season, really. So like I said, again, give me give me your comments, um, you know, what you like, what you don't like, what you want me to do, what you want me to cover. And I will kind of do that for you guys. So I'm going to give you a morning back to you. I'm going to have a cup of tea, get warmed up, do a bit of work, and then keep an eye on the wamba sack and go live as and when I can, when that news is announced, everyone. So take care. Have a lovely morning. Come on, your irons. Subscribe, share West Ham Irons channel.